And our next guest was once a beloved star of stage and screen, but disappeared from the public eye 15 years ago. Until now, that is. He joined us earlier this morning for his first TV interview since opening up about his struggles with substance abuse and living with bipolar. I mean, recently you've been very brave, very open, very honest about your life and, and what's been going on for you. But I wanted to go back to the beginning, really, and talk about your, your time at Cambridge. Yeah. And I know Stephen Fry invited you to be part of Footlights. And That's this right. paved this way to this career. Edinburgh, hugely successful, and the TV followed. Did you always want to go into a life of sort of comedy and TV? Well, no, in the beginning at school, uh, my passion was... Uh, a sport. It was a chance meeting with uh, Stephen Fry and Emma Thompson and Hugh Laurie. I don't know what's happened to them. I wish them the best of luck. <laughs> Massively successful. That work, that foundation that you put in there was hugely successful. One of the UK's top stand-ups, a huge on TV, Olivier Awards for the theatre. But it's... Olivier nomination. Well, I gave you an award. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. It, uh... It took its toll. Um, because you mentioned your working-class background, there was this drive, you know, don't say no, do everything, work hard. That, 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 that's certainly true, because if you're not born into money, uh, then there's all the, always that thing of, at least in my case, make her while the sun shines. Uh, you never know when it's going to stop. You're on a streak of luck. Uh, also, the, the, I just really enjoyed working, but all, all work and no play takes its toll, and you forget to relax. So which came first, then? The, 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 the slide into depression? Did, was that a catalyst for the, for the drinking and the, and the, and the coke-taking? Well, um, because when I had DOSH and I could afford uh, to go and see good psychiatrists, mm -hmm. and I, said, I have to get to the bottom of this, because I remember on... Uh, oh, it was on uh, Good Morning, I think it was with uh, Lorraine talked about it. This was many years ago, lovely Lorraine, uh, who said, look, Teddy, you've got all this money, uh, what, how can you be depressed? You've got... You know, you've got, you live in a lovely place, how can you be depressed? I said, well... Um, uh, I don't know. The depression, the, the overwork came first. Mm. Then uh, I, th I think the chronology was the overwork, no uh, holidays, no taking a break, and eventually I think you snap and you try and replace it with something. Yeah. In my um, case, it was uh, cocaine. I remember. Uh, sorry, I know I'm slipping back because I'm quite nervous. I had a long conversation with Victoria Wood. Uh, so I know I'm jumping about. We were waiting to go on stage in the wings uh, to give Ken Dodd a Lifetime Achievement Award. No, it was Ken Dodd, so he was into the eighth hour of his set, mm. and uh, obviously the genius he was. And, he, and uh, Victoria said to me, well, I think a lot of people go into drugs because they come off after all this adrenaline and, and, and stuff, and where, where do you go? Yeah. So that was that. And then, then the booze came along, and then the depression set in, and so it, 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 so uh, a psychiatrist, one in particular, sorted out um, uh, the linear pattern. He said it's quite common, but he said there's something else there, there's something darker there, and that's why the Guardian article came out the other day about bipolarity. And it shows like this, uh, again, this isn't being sycophantic, the, the stigma is getting better about mental illness. But within that, there's a, there's a substrate, which is bipolarity, which is another huge... Like, like autism, like any disease, it's a huge spectrum. It's another one, everything in between. And it's not... It used to be called manic depression, but now it's called bipolarity, bipolarity one, and there's everything in between. And it, I mean, at its worst for you, and this was reported in the article, Article that you were drinking two bottles of vodka a day, 10 um, grams of coke, it was costing you £4,000. You sort of hauled yourself up in your Riverside flat for six months. Um, and getting that diagnosis of bipolar seemed to make everything in your behaviour start to click into place slightly. It, it gave it a reason why you went to such extremes. It, 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 in that sense, it, w it was kind of unravelling. Uh, it, it's, you know, to use a, a, a cliché, right, you've, you say you've got a cut on your leg and it's infected with some kind of a microbe. Um, uh, it takes a long time to find out exactly what it is, uh, you know, what, what things you need to take. And so that's why I'm... Uh, interested in uh, the whole aspect of bipolarity and uh, the way it used to be simply mm, uh, rather dismissed, I have to say, is, oh, he's yeah. a bit moody, one day's yeah. up, one day... And it's, it's, it's far more complicated than that. Even, even the, the best books I've read, the best people I've spoken to when I had the money, when I could uh, 
um, uh, talk to them who are special in their field, except they would be the first thing. There are no specialists. It's still under mm. discussion in much the same way that mental illness generally was, was say, all that put yourself together yeah. stuff. Yeah. Now we understand a bit more. Thank goodness well, we I, do. Yes. Thankfully, we are talking about it so much more openly than, than we've ever yes. done before. Um, it's people like you who will pr be prepared to come and sit on a sofa and, and talk about it that opens it up and there'll be people that are watching. And, yeah. Um, it's so important. Uh, uh, well, as far as you're true. concerned, with with everything that you've been through, and I know that you you say it's a long a long journey, and you're you know there are parts of it you're beginning to put together. Yeah. What was it for you that made you decide that this was the time to talk about it? Okay, I'm all right now, or I'm in the right place. Ah, well, if I go to the first one, it wasn't a particular time. It was a, a, a kind of a gradation. It was a kind of titration. There was no specific. I can tell you a specific moment with the cocaine, if you like. Uh, my mum, who, uh, and, uh, you know, shortly before uh, she died, uh, so I had a millennium party at the big, stupid warehouse uh, looking over the Thames with the river police going by, and they said, <laughs> and this is funny, but it's not funny. At the same time, say, Tony, with their megaphones, Tony, 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 we like you on Who's Line Zero. Please stop throwing everything into the Thames, all the furniture. You mustn't. I said, OK, I'll pay for it. And so uh, I covered it you all up. You chucked all your furniture out the window. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I said, what, what, what's, what's, what's the point of this? Mm. And uh, they kind of... Uh, but Mum found these wraps, but also, and this is another thing about the financial naivety, she said, what are these, Tony, behind the sofa? And behind the sofa were just a bunch of scrunched up cheques to the value of £160,000, oh which I just received. And I thought, oh, my <laughs> And so I had to send them back to the agents. And the agents completely, they, they thought I was taking the mic. Yeah. And so it took. And so that was that was a part. So that's when the cocaine so she stopped. Found the cocaine well, she had it. She she you sent the cocaine off to a tox toxicologist. I sent it off. And it was and the t and, and the, <laughs> the the makeup of that cocaine was five percent cocaine, and the rest of it was cut glass, animal, and human feces. That's right. That's most, what, most, that's mostly what that. you were actually snorting. That's right. And so uh, so you didn't even not that I'd recommend it because it's it's not fun um, uh, at all. I think it's still used properly by specialists in ocular surgery. They still use it, um, uh, but uh, the idea of the, as Robin Williams called it, the devil's dandruff, uh, all, all the things, uh, it heightens, makes it become uninterruptible and uh, irrational, disinhibited. Yeah. Uh, but that was another point. The, my mum, uh, it was the, the money being wasted, uh, finding the checks. So what am I, what am I doing with my life? But the tox report. I thought, no, that was a rare moment of clarity. Yeah. So you get uh, the top toxicologist from the University of Birmingham, I think it was. He said, Tony, I, I won't swear, but I'll, I'll use I'll use um, uh, on a matter of Tony, okay, here's the report. Um, you're taking a lot of um, pit. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so you know what I mean? I oh, I thought Pitt was street slang for heroin. I have no take it. I said, no, 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 literally. Oh, That's gosh, what you're God. taking. And that, that was a... Well, that was a yeah. that everybody needs, or, have, or you hope that everybody's going to have someone to cling on to. And, and your partner yes. has been incredible. Through yes. the worst possible times and now when, in, when times are getting better. Oh, yes, so, yeah, I've been with him 35 years now and uh, met him in a uh, musical, in Me and My Girl, and we were very shy and uh, we didn't actually speak to each other. We were in it for a year. We didn't actually speak together uh, 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 for six months until one time uh, when we were in the lift. It's one of those things, and it sounds a bit Barbara Carton, our eyes lingered just a touch too uh -huh. longer uh -huh. on each other and we've been together and without him I'd be dead and there's no question about oh, that. Wow. And wow. you are, like you are working, man. you are back. Back to the to the Edinburgh Fringe. I'm uh, yeah going to the Edinburgh Fringe. So this is my plug. I, I'm getting together with some of the um, uh, Who's Line chums whom I haven't seen uh, in a long time because apart from anything else, the isolationism mm. that comes with bipolarity and and depression and all the things, all the spectrum of depression. Yeah. If you do alienate people, they want to love you, they like you, yeah, yeah. but if you don't answer the phone and don't answer the letters, uh, then there's so much they can do. Except until one time, Mark was in New York winning. Uh, in Blood Brothers, one of my favourite musicals. I'm going to big my mark up now because he won a big award on Broadway. But he was away for 18 months. I was left to my own devices. 
and um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so without uh, without him, yeah, and uh, he is my saviour. And also a handful of gosh, when the money runs out, it's funny how the phone stops ringing. Yeah, yeah we've heard that before. Yes, yes. and I, I think loads of people know that as well. Back to uh, the fringe, and uh, it's it's sold out uh, because a lot of people come along and say. God, I thought you were dead. <laughs> so, so there's that. Oh. But I'm also doing a kind of one of those one-on-one -on -one kind of interviews with a uh, very um, a highly regarded comedy historian called uh, Robert Ross. He's written about 20 books. He's interviewed everyone. He knows everything. And it's just me and him for an hour. And um, the idea is, I don't want to know what you're going to ask me. You don't know. So it's going to be different every night. I don't know. No plan. Um, no templates. Mm. And um, and uh, that's going to be so two particular. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it will, and 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 a laugh as well. Yeah. And even the guardian, the guardian uh, thing, which and she was, she was so lovely, and it, uh, 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 and I'm really pleased at the response. At least I feel I'm doing something which which is important. You really are. Uh, just by just by sitting here, just by talking about it, um, is every every single. There sometimes they're small steps, but um, but you know for some people yeah. they can be huge. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you're. Back. Oh, thank you. Isn't oh, I just say right, right, right. It's just the, before uh, the lady from the guardian. Uh, who, who really honest, pull no punches, and I didn't want to, to but she said, oh, before, <laughs> and this baby is still making me laugh on, on the taxi right here, she said, oh, Tony, um, you know, I think uh, you, you're doing some really good stuff, and may I just say, uh, you know, uh, you, you've been through a rough time, but for someone who's nearly 70, you're looking great. <laughs> and I said, oh, thank you. I'll be 60 in uh, <laughs> five months' time, but, 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 but thank Thanks very much. Oh, and she said, oh, well, I'll just start the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they kept, oh, that's I wish brilliant. kept that in. Oh, my God. Uh, it's so lovely to see you. And Bless thank you. you for coming in and talking today. Well. And it, have a great time. It's, in my, it's my pleasure. And come, 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 come and uh, see the show. And, uh, and, and you too can have a shirt like mine. <laughs> but I'm not going to plug the maker. <laughs> I'm going to say, I wore your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's such a lovely guy. It was really lovely really to see him. It's great to see him. Speaking um, so openly yeah, and honestly. On a better road.